uh, pretty much everyone except Ridiculous Hat yeah. uh, seems to. Oh, really? Sure, so at least you've got. Well, and even then, I feel like he was, he's still on the same page. It's more so just like he still has hope that the mode will be okay yeah. and that, like, yeah. Ooh, first place. Sorry. Oh, no, oh, you Sorry, won. I, well done. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, first place in Hearthstone takes? Yeah, I guess. wow, that's awesome. <laughs> No, well no, no, sorry. I, hold, hold up, y'all. Y'all need to see. He has hope that it, the, just the announcement was terrible, but the mode is still going to be fun, and yeah. I don't think everyone shares that hope. <laughs> yeah, I've yet to hear that take, so it's. I'm, I'm look just at this glad. board, mofos. Look at this board. Hold on, I'm looking. Oh wow, look at that. <laughs> All right, you deserve to gloat. That's pretty good. Ninety-four, one thirty-six. <laughs> yeah, here, chat. You guys can see this too. Check this out. I realize that Cthulhu boards are getting bigger, but that's a bug, and they need to fix it. And I wasn't playing. Mm, there's <clears> a lot <throat> of bugs right now. Did the oh, yeah. was the bartender jaunty and give you some cool advice when you? Uh... Yeah, yeah, he was. You know, as always, um, whether he was offering me good things or not, he was telling me that I was doing great. That's fantastic. <laughs> good this news. time it wasn't a lie. Good this Wait, time. are you using Bob instead of Tiki Rag? <laughs> I I I <laughs> keep Tiki forgetting. Rag just at you the whole time. <laughs> like yeah, I moved around some bartenders to try the others, and then I ended up on basic ass Bob again, and I keep forgetting to go back in and switch off. <laughs> wow. Well, well, basic ass. Basic, basic ass my Bob. Part. That's better than mercenaries. That sounds like I should Actually, probably have I like the instance. Probably to that. nobody's surprise. There you yeah. go. Um, all right. Well, here comes then. Let's do this uh, show here, and uh, we'll have some fun today. Sounds so everybody, step back and enjoy. Sounds while, good. While we record an episode of the instance, and it begins. Uh, okay, we gotta have the right tab up. Three, two, one. This disc is only intended for use in a Dreamcast console. Track number one contains game data, so don't go playing that track. Welcome to The Instance, everybody. This is The Instance, episode 648. It is Friday, September 3rd, 2021. I'm Scott Johnson, joined today by Jocelyn uh, Kearney, who's sitting over there looking at me. Hey, hey Jocelyn. I almost said Moffat again. I almost did it. I know I you were so it. close. I could, I could feel the hesitation, and you got there, and I'm so proud. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> it's so hard, and you're not the only one. All the people uh, with new names after marriages, I screw them up, so don't feel bad. Never feel bad. It's always me. <laughs> I hope uh, none of your security questions are, what was your maiden name? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they are not. <laughs> oh, good. That's really good, because I just did a like end-around sort of doxing job on you if you did. <laughs> Uh, also, why doesn't ever ask me what my maiden name was? Maybe right. I changed my name. Yeah, maybe I you didn't, did. but maybe I did. Maybe you did. Maybe it isn't. Maybe you don't wine, know? it's not Wine Zerple. It's uh, I don't know Jensen or something. That'd be cool. <laughs> it's Garrett Jensen. Garrett Garrett Jensen. Yeah. Garrett Jensen, attorney at law. I'm serious. I'd, uh, take, I'd take. I'd hire you on my case if you were my lawyer. Sure. Why not? Yeah, Garrett Jensen. He gets the job done. He does. He gets it done every time. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Garrett Jensen, it's Garrett Wine Zerple. Everybody joining us also. Hi, Garrett. Hi, hi, Scott. Hi. It was a it was a warm and hot summer Florida night. Was it when she walked in my door? Oh my gosh, that's the worst place to be at night in the hot in the heat. She asked me, "What's your maiden name?" <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's nice to see you both. I had a little vacation for my anniversary, and uh, that was nice. And uh, right before that, though, I had some bad Thai food. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I was about to ask. I was like, hold up, Scott. You told me you had a stomach ache. Are you telling <laughs> yes. me that you forgot you had an anniversary vacation and you lied to me and told me you I had wish. a stomach ache? I wish. I would Because love if it. I had to picture you on the toilet for no good goddamn reason, I'm going to be very angry at you. Uh, I, was, I didn't go till t Sunday, so I was well over my uh, nightmarish experience. And then I was gone till Wednesday. And now I'm back. And I'm back and proud to be back. It's weird. You guys ever take a little time off and you go... Uh, I need to get back and get creative again, even though the part of the reason you left is because you're doing too many things and you're like, I need a break. But now you're like, want to go that in. That means it's working as intended. Yeah, I absolutely yeah. do that. Okay. I absolutely do that. So um, that's what you want you know, then. You want to feel like you got more to do when you get back? Because I feel like maybe that, you know, hurts the purpose a little bit of trying to get away and rethink and, you know chill out a little bit i don't know maybe i don't understand I, vacations maybe i don't get it, it I, I, <laughs> you can hit a reset button and still have stuff to do after that's true <laughs> yeah that's i think point. it's why i like long vacations because if i'm lucky i uh, I, I do one a year because yeah. like blizzcon's always like a hot that's not a vacation like three <laughs> no. three days like go 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 yeah. i am not ready to leave when i'm out in california for that um but like when i actually do like my proper go down in the keys for like a, a week plus with katie 
I'm ready to go home by the end of that. And that's great. I yeah, feel that's what you want. That's when I know I, I hit peak relaxation. Yeah. And I'm thinking about everything. I'm like, I can't wait to mow the lawn. My lawn's going to look great. I can't wait to work again. I miss, I miss talking to Jocelyn on the angry chicken. Yeah. Yeah. All these things. These are all yeah. truths. Yeah. I guess I understand. I guess I left going, man, I have too many things going on. And I came back going, Ooh, I can't wait to do too many things, you know? <laughs> Yeah, which is yeah. good it's good it that good. means you're like re-energized yeah you're right the whole point <laughs> you're right that is the whole point and i did that so it was great and uh thank you all for your patience there at home who uh, did not have a show last week but uh, we have one for you this week before we dive into the topic of the week i want to uh give a big final thanks to everybody who helped with the charity that we ran with the broken hearthstone uh charity that we did for black girls code rain and women in games international here's what's great about this um, we're still doing the tally cause we just ended it, but it's, uh, we're somewhere between eight and $10,000. And the great thing about it is all of that money split almost exactly three ways, but people chose. So everybody got to choose when they checked out with their order to say, I want this to go to black girls code, or I want this to go to rain, or I want this to go to the other one. And <laughs> no offense to the other one, women's and games international, uh, <laughs> And, uh, you don't have this in front of you. You're readily get <laughs> off from memory. Yeah, doing it from memory. Anyway, so they they uh, everybody did that in a way that ended up being a kind of a three way split just naturally, which is just crazy. So I'm going to be really happy to write those checks for those three uh, fantastic organizations, and it's all uh, down to you guys and your and your very uh, uh, generous support of that uh, that we were able to do this. So thank you again for that. Now, on with the topic. Today's big discussion, content warnings. I'd like to warn everybody that the show you're about to listen to will contain nudity. No, it will not. It will not have any nudity in it. Uh, but it will... I mean, if you're listening to it on audio, it, it can. <laughs> it you, can. You can undress me with your ears if you Use want. Use your imagination. <laughs> A naked Garrett is only one thought away, so it's not hard. Yeah. Please, um, please imagine me hotter than I actually am. Please do. Oh, God. Please. Thank you. <laughs> Um, but the big question hanging over content warnings, and they've been they've been in the uh, the gaming discussion lately uh, as to whether they actually do any good or if they, I don't know, are, are kind of antithetical to their purpose. Um, easy examples are things like, you know, back in the day, if you tried to warn people about Mortal Kombat, kids would just want to play Mortal Kombat more. Um, that was that would be kind of their. Their mode is to find either a friend who had it or somehow sneak it because, ooh, look at this forbidden fruit all the all the adults are freaking out about. Scott, and, are you talking about me when I was seven years old? Basically. It sounds like <laughs> me when I was seven years old. It's basically, yeah, basically that. I mean, what's nice is okay. I was like 20, when did the first one come out? 92 or 3, whatever it was. So I was like 22, something like that. And I'm like now in a place in my life where I'm like, my parents can't tell me I can't play a game like Mortal Kombat. I can buy any games I want. I'm I'm over 18. Look at me. I'm an adult living my life. Um, and that was <laughs> kind of great. But I do remember at the time, you know, all this freak out and stuff. And it's a lot of what drove the MSRB to uh, make a rating system. And the rest of the world also with their own versions of rating systems that are all kind of grown from inside the gaming industry rather than being dictated from outside, which I think is a good thing overall. But we're not even talking about those so much. We're talking about less ratings and more content warnings. Like the following game has depictions of graphic violence or uh, nudity or uh, adult language or whatever you want to think of. You've seen these disclaimers before. The thing I played at the top of the show was this weird... This weird audio they used to include in Dreamcast games, because back in the day, those discs had all of the audio content was audio content, like burned on a disc like the way you would with a compact disc. And then the data was one giant track that was just garble if you tried to play it. They just sounded like static. And I used to do this with my PlayStation 1 discs, some Dreamcast discs and that sort of thing. Anyway, they were always just warning people, don't, you know, don't play this, don't play that track on audio. It's going to sound terrible. And, you know, that's another form of this, although a kind of a goofy one, and I think it's kind of funny that they ever did it. It also made those games very easy to copy, by the way. Very piratable back in the day. Um, anyway, so we're used to this kind of media, right? Characters are fictitious. Any resemblance to those living or dead is purely co coincidental. We've seen that in movies and television. Uh, but those South Park is my favorite one. Yeah. Uh, give me an example of how does that go? Do you know it up by heart? 
give it to oh, me. Oh, uh, no, I do not. No, <laughs> it's, Dang it. it's uh, uh, let's see. South Park disclaimer is what I'm punching into my into my Google. All characters and events in this show, even those based on real people, are entirely fictional. All celebrity voices are impersonated poorly. The following program contains coarse language and due to its content should not be viewed by anyone. Yeah, see, that's pretty good. So that brings me to the other category, which is people get to be a little goofy with it. Uh, like, for example, uh, let's see. Here's a fun one. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, here it is. Outlast. Okay, you guys remember the, the horror game Outlast? <laughs> this played Vaguely, it, yeah, I think rarely. I played 10 minutes. <laughs> I played. And then went, I, nope, I, nope, nope, nope. Yeah, that game scared the <laughs> hell out of me, and I played two on a stream, and I about died. But anyway, uh, Outlast has this warning. Outlast contains intense violence, gore, graphical sexual content, graphical graphic sexual content and strong language please enjoy so they're getting a little funny about it there at the end <laughs> right so you, you know there's no law as to how you do this or why you do it or whatever you just kind of um do it it's interesting though because those examples i gave earlier like in film and stuff they're non-interactive video games pose a whole new question about how content warnings are supposed to work or why they're there in the first place and there are a lot of new questions about what content you should even consider worthy of warning people about. Like, when is it too much to give me too much warning? When I buy a new Call of Duty game, I know what I'm getting into. I'm going to shoot a lot of people in that game. There's no doubt about it. And some sergeant's going to go, we're going to F and F and F and F. So you know there's going to be some swears. And then there might be uh, you break into a room and there's, a I don't know, a topless lady. Whatever. Like, at some point... You're going to bump into some certain games where you just know what kind of content you're getting to getting into. Who are they actually warning here? Um, so these are just some of the questions. For example, Pokemon Go wants you to verify you're not driving all the time or standing in the middle of the street. Even games like that are always going, hey, are you driving? No, I'm not driving. I'm at the park. I'm standing here, you dumbasses. My wife is driving. My wife Let is me driving. catch Pokemon while we go I on a road a trip. Passenger. Exactly. <laughs> So, it doesn't matter if I'm catching Pokemon at 75 miles per hour with cruise control on. It's fine. <laughs> so that brings us Not in the to... driver's seat. I want to be very clear. Not in the driver's seat. Not in the, no, Shouldn't never. have mentioned cruise control. Yeah. That, <laughs> next to my metaphor. I don't know if I've talked about it on this show. I have on others, but my wife doesn't like how I drive. I don't know why. I'm fine. I, I drive fine. I've had one ticket my whole life. I've never had any other issues or altercations. I never, I never get you know i don't speed i'm not crazy but she hates how i drive i think i make her sick or something i'm starting to think that scott might drive too slow maybe that's it i mean one, <laughs> don't one speed ticket, yeah one there's ticket. only one other option it's that for the love of god can we get where we're going and that one <laughs> ticket was like four years ago and it was real dubious anyway so it's like i just am a, i have almost a perfect record she hates how i drive so when we go anywhere together she chooses to drive and it's kind of great i get to play little games and screw around on my phone and whatever i want to do while she's, you know, obeying the laws and and uh, roads of the of the land, and I don't have to think about it, <laughs> it's great. If the drive is uh, uh, under six hours, I tend to mm. not be able to stand not driving. I I have mm. to drive. Okay, let me ask a you certain, this. Let me ask you this. Length where, if you mm. go, uh, who gets tired the quickest if you're driving a long haul, like you're doing a big uh, trip? Oh, get... oh, definitely Katie, without okay. a doubt. Well, then I'm her. I'm going to straight up throw her under the I get sleepy driving bus. Because I can go 30 minutes and then I'm out. So then Kim. Has oh, to yeah. Wow. Yeah. What? It's bad. I'm telling Damn. you. I've, I've done straight from here to North Carolina without stopping the whole time. Oh, that's, that's like a 13 hour. That's drive. insane. That's insane. See, I couldn't do that. So and this is for real, Jocelyn. Like I can't go. It's about 30 minutes before something hits me and I just want to shut my eyes and it's bad. It's like a weird. Even it's almost, when you're dry, like when you're in control yeah, of the car. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. Okay, <laughs> now we know why Kim doesn't want you to drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably we have figured it out. You left out a key part, which is you get the sleepies 30 minutes into driving. Yeah. And I've got some. That would terrify me too. I have a couple. It used of... to be for 30 minutes to the closest Taco Bell for me. All right. Oh, so that right. would be a major issue. Oh, my gosh. That's a long way to go for. This is like back Bell. in way back in the day. Well, uh, speaking of people driving your car, let's talk about boyfriends and their dungeons. Um, that's a weird transition, but we'll get to it. <laughs> So there are examples in the more recent era, you know, Modern Warfare. Do you guys remember that airport scene where they said, hey, if you want oh, to skip yeah. this, you can because you're going to kill a bunch of innocent people or whatever. And then there were people who I, I assume someone somewhere skipped it. I don't know who did, though, because I, I, my first playthrough, I didn't shoot anyone. Oh, interesting. You just walk through there with them because you could do that, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And they just they would yeah. mow down everybody else. But you could full on skip the scene. And I don't know anyone who skipped it. 
I'm sure someone did. Somebody somewhere skipped it. Maybe a parent playing with their kid went, whoa, we're not doing this, and they skipped it. Yeah, this was the mission no Russian. It 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 made a lot of a lot of noise, a lot of headlines back in this would have been two thousand nine. Yeah. Yeah. Um Gordon Taylor. God, I was ago. something in LA at the time. I remember playing it. Yeah. Weird, right? I was boy, that's a sense memory. Yeah. Same. <laughs> it's a long time ago. But I remember playing through it because now I had to. I'm like, oh wait, you're gonna do this really you're gonna you're gonna make a really hard decision to do a content thing here that challenges stuff and makes you uncomfortable so much so that you have to put a warning in here and warn me that you're you know that you can skip it or whatever well of course i need to see what you're gonna do like i don't think that was the intent is my point of a content <laughs> well, I think it, yeah it probably depends on the type of person you are right like like i enjoy violent media i consume a lot of it i, yeah. I don't really think too much of it except when that media kind of throws it in my face and kind of uh, i feel uh, judges me for yeah. For consuming it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Give an example of that. <laughs> which I was listening to the uh, Suicide Squad film sack last night, which I think Brian Dunaway brought up. Oh, yeah. Is that that movie does exactly that. It's yeah. like, oh, yeah, isn't violence fun? And then you're like, oh, no, those are innocent people. Yeah. Don't you feel bad, viewer, who just sat there and watched this and enjoyed it? Yeah. Yeah. It's very subversive. That movie and James Gunn in general has this ability to make you feel like it's gratuitous on purpose. But then they kind of throw it back at you. You're just like, oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah. It's he's really, he's a he's a glorious bastard. He's really down. great. Yeah. Well, that's a really good point. I mean, Jocelyn, if you if you get to a uh, like that scene, what would it tell you to, to now? Now you want to play it more, or oh, maybe I should skip it. Like, how do you how do you feel when you see a warning like that? Uh, for me, I'm definitely one of the people who would skip that. <laughs> yeah, I would skip that content. I mean, I think. Personally, for me, it comes down to enjoyment level and I don't like people like doing things for the sake of doing things. You know what I mean? Like being shocking just for the sake of it. Like if it serves a greater narrative purpose, fine. But I think if you're putting a scene in and then also giving me the option to skip it, it's because you as a creator are admitting it doesn't really need to be here. Mm. <laughs> so, I mean, that's kind of like my take on it is if it's skippable, it's clearly not part of a grander scheme. And I'm not the kind of person who would want to necessarily subject myself to that. And I think it's a lot different in video games and movies, because for me, I'm the character doing the horrible thing mm. instead of watching another character that I'm removed from doing the horrible thing. Yeah. And I think that plays a lot into how I feel about stuff. Like I can watch TV and movies all day with characters doing horrible, awful, terrible things. And it doesn't impact me nearly as much because I'm like, okay, you're telling a story about somebody else mm. versus like video games, which tend to put you into a situation and say, now, what would you do? And that's also even using the modern warfare example, really interesting to me that both you and Garrett played through the same scene and played it in different ways, which I think also comes down to content and giving you a choice and saying, hey, you as a character in a video game can choose to shoot your way through the civilians or you can find another way. And yeah. if they also don't give you the other way, that also really bothers me and I think is worth a, worth a warning. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So I, I really I appreciate that perspective because, um, like I said, I've never heard anybody who, who, who skipped it. But it is interesting to hear that Garrett just straight up didn't shoot anybody. And in my case, I thought that the guys I was with were going to – I was going to blow my cover – if I didn't shoot something. So I shot inanimate objects. So we go through the place and they're just blowing these people away. I'm like, this is horrible, but I'll go ahead and shoot that that vending machine over there. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, look great. how we, terrible so, my aim is. Yeah, oh, look, no. oh, no. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of how I handled it. And I felt like, is this what I would do in real life? If I was in the situation, would I... Just make a bunch well, of poor shots. Well, it makes you shots. ask those terrible questions of yourself, right? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and that, that that's kind of my yeah. Like, and and I don't want to be clear like that. I like when I say like I like violent media, and so I like that level. I'm saying that because I like violent media. When I see a warning like that, I'm like, oh hell yeah! I need to see what the hell's going on in here. No Russian is far from like my favorite video game level. Although I do like that they designed it in a way where you can complete it without taking part in the heinous acts that are, are depicted in that scene. Right. Um, it's, you know, I don't think call of duty, I, I wouldn't consider it high art, but it's art. on the level of the kind of the, the mountain dew fueled, uh, psychosis that is a call of duty game. I think sure. that's one of the more interesting things that they've 
programmed into the game is that you can complete that level without participating. Yeah, maybe the most. Like, there's another moment with when the nuke hits, and that's maybe in two. Uh, Modern Warfare 2, I can't remember. I can't remember where that scene is. But there's there's some pretty heavy stuff in those games. And they can, and they can you know, pull you in emotional directions, which is one of the things video games are getting better and better at. Used to be the purview of film and TV. Video games have gotten better and better over the last 20 years to the point that, you know, we can have really dramatic, interesting, artistic moments in video games. But what Jocelyn said earlier, I think, is key. You know, people say to me, Scott, oh, I heard you scream your way through the latest Resident Evil game. Boy, were you scared. Boy, here's a movie you sure hate. And I have to always correct them and go, no, you don't understand. The movies do nothing for me in terms of scariness. I don't care. You can show me the worst, scariest movie. Show me that Vivitch or Witch movie. Show me... Um, <laughs> You got the two V's in there. It drives me crazy. Um, it does. What's the other the one? The movie that... is scary in your brain, not necessarily yeah, on the screen. It's right. psychological horror. It's psychological yeah. horror. But I just watched that movie, by the way. That is the best horror movie I've seen it's in like really a decade. Good. Yeah, it it's really so good. It's very, very good. It's very good. But to me, like uh, uh, hered- uh, Hereditary and uh, uh, Summer or Midsummer uh, by that one director, I can't remember. He's come the close to really freaking me out. But again, it's a, it's a psychological kind of horror. Um, but either way. What I'm seeing are characters subjected to a thing in a scripted manner that cannot be altered. I can't control anybody. I can't even move anybody. They're just going to do what they're going to do, and that doesn't scare me. I'm just getting presented something. I'm not saying this is everybody, but it's definitely me. In a video game scenario, you could give me a way cheesier game scenario in a bad Resident Evil game, I don't know, five even, um, and, and I'll still be terrified and actually don't want to play it. Well, why? What's the difference? The difference is I'm driving. <laughs> it's the uh, control. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have direct control. Therefore, you are in that world. And even if it's like something old and clunky looking like the original um, Silent Hill, I had to quit that game, turn on all the lights and hide in my bed. It was that bad. <laughs> and I was oh, an adult. Yeah. I was an adult man. I was 20 something. And my wife was like, what's the matter with you? I'm like, I'm not putting the dogs away and I'm not going to turn the lights off. You're going to have to do all this tonight. Why? Uh, I heard a weird sound in the prison part of the thing and I just couldn't do it. And I, <laughs> I gave up. Yeah, like, I, Oh, my God. Katie had so much fun watching me squirm playing Resident Evil 7. <laughs> um, I'm the same way. Although I, I jump scares in movies 100 percent get me yeah. like oh, almost every time. every time. I I'm shriek. Like, <laughs> Like there, I I'm cuss the one so in the movie much. theater that people are like, I'm so glad she was there because it was so funny <laughs> <laughs> when that thing jumped out and she screamed. Yeah. That's yeah. me every time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they absolutely get me. But Resident Evil 7 is probably the most scared I've ever been in anything, in any media, because being in control is so much worse. Yeah. Like yeah. if I was in that situation, if I walked up the mansion, I'd be like, cool. Well, I'm leaving. Yeah. Yep. This yeah. is a terrible idea. I'm going to go find the police. Uh, maybe, maybe bring the army. How do I bring the army? Mm-hmm. Can I do that? Is that an option? <laughs> Is there like nine one two you can use to call the army? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a thing? Yeah. Wait, does in Canada no, can I, I call? No, oh. that's not a thing. Don't dial nine one two. Okay, don't dial nine one two. Or, or, or you know, if someone else does and, and wants to let us know, please, please do. Unless you then get in trouble, and then we are not culpable. This is not advice. I am not telling yeah, you. Yeah, I don't want to do it on Twitch. Is my main thing. If I do it here, I would get in trouble. Yeah. All yeah, right. So yeah. it's interesting. But some of these, some, some of these games, they go, they go in the ver- ver- verbose direction, and others don't. So you could just put in the front of these games, hey, there's some scary stuff coming up. Done. That's your warning. Or you could get really verbose, like Bioshock did. Check this out. Animal cruelty, body horror, a clown, drug use, cannibalism, claustrophobic, nystophobic scenarios. Nystophobic? I'm not sure what that is. Um, I feel like maybe that's like darkness, like blackout. That's, oh, that's could what be. Could that be. Latin says to me as a not a Latin speaking person, but <laughs> <laughs> as our only as, as the only person in this uh, circle. Oh, who nicto, knows any nictophobia. Latin. Yeah, it's extreme and irrational fear of of the night or darkness. Oh, I have yes, that. Yes, I win! <laughs> I have that sometimes. Depends on what time it is. It's, it's like uh, two in the morning. The fact that he just put a clown in there is, I can't <laughs> help but say, funny. Oh, it's amazing. Um, as, as someone who has a child, I was deathly afraid of clowns. No, clowns are the worst. They scared the crap out of me. They still scare me. They creep the hell out of me. Uh, it goes on <laughs> to say... It me so much now, but yeah, as a kid, that, yeah. was, no, that was a no-go. It goes on to say, insects, drowning, substance abuse, needles, mutilation, optional violence against children. The game utilizes jump scares and takes place in a city built underwater, which is an interesting bit of a warning because there are people who would really freak out thinking about that. So I'm of the opinion that if you're going to do it, you may as well go all out like that. Like, just lay it out and just say, yeah. every possible phobia and thing that we could think of, we put in our content warning... 
And if that's not good enough for you, well, let us know on social media because you surely will. And then maybe we'll add a couple more. Um, but you're gonna get you're gonna get less heat if you try to explain what's in your game versus barely trying. I would think anyway. But that brings us to this case of the boyfriend dungeon dungeon, which uh, Jocelyn, one of our numbers here, has played. Right, Jocelyn, you played the boyfriend dungeon, right? I have. Uh, there's only two weapons that I have not fully completed their romances with. I'm on step five with both of them. Uh, but yes, I have. I have completed the main story and most of the different scenarios with all of the different weapons that you can date just because I wanted a full idea of the content that was in the game. Okay, fair enough. Now, this game has an interesting content warning. It says this, the game may include references to unwanted advances, stalking, and other forms of emotional manipulation. Play with care. Uh, some wanted that message to go further and to include other things. I guess there's a character they'd like to remove entirely, some people. Um, we yes. can, we can speak to all of this, but having, having spent time in the game, but also had having seen that content warning, like where, where did all this take you, leave you, make you feel, make you not feel like, like how did it work for you to see this in the game that you're playing pretty thoroughly? Yeah. So, I mean, especially as someone who has experienced a lot of these things, like in real life, I feel like this content warning is specifically written for me. And I kind of, uh, I think that the big problem with this specific content warning is exactly the opposite to what Bioshock did. Bioshock just came out and said, okay, animal cruelty, clowns, let's go, yeah. drowning, bad things. Like, these are in our game. And with Boyfriend Dungeon, it said this game may include, which gave them kind of like an out of like you could, it made the player think that you could navigate the game in a way that would leave you out of these scenarios, which you absolutely cannot. It is part of the main story. Kind of the whole point of the character is he is obsessed with you. He stalks you. He like gaslights you. All of that stuff is in the game and you have to deal with him because that is the main story arc. Right. There's absolutely no way around it. So I think that that was, um, the piece that I would have changed with this content warning. But other than that, I think it's fine. Like all of those things were in there. They were upfront about it. And the fact that, you know, like they, they stated all of the things, the only, like it was a one word problem, right? It's the may include instead of just this game includes yeah. period. Yeah. Well, as you, <laughs> um, so you said before, but before I forget to even bring this up, you said before, like sure. having experienced a lot of this sort of behavior from real people in life in general before, um, and we've all, every, you know, everyone's experienced some form of somebody being manipulative or awful or whatever. But I'm, I'm, I'm guessing in maybe even worse case scenarios, we don't have to get into any details here. But my, my question is, having been through that and then being presented with a story that includes a bunch of that, is it, is it hard? Is it harder or easier? Knowing going in that okay, well, this is a story about this stuff. I've experienced some of it, so I've got a point of reference. And let's see how they present it. And here's the story. Okay, that was interesting. And I really liked her and I really didn't or, or whatever. But did the warning really do anything for you other than, I don't know, Did is that is that a positive or a negative or, or a nothing burger when it comes to whether you play it or not? Well, I think uh, for me, if nothing else, it just, it, it gives you that heads up, right? It gives you a chance to uh, either engage or disengage with the game and that's going to be a personal preference, right? Like that's going to be like if I know that I spent the worst part of my late teens, early 20s in a situation like this, maybe that's content I don't want to engage with. For me, I know that I'm now, you know, 15 years away from that. So I have some distance. I have some emotional stability now that I didn't have then. But would I have played this game if I saw this content warning at 22? Hell no! <laughs> like I would have stayed away from it. But... I've grown a lot. I've learned a lot. I've gone through a lot. And now I can deal with these things in a in a healthier way. And I think that it really comes down to the, again, individual choice of whether or not you want to engage with that style of content. For me, it gave me a chance to like expect it and know it's coming and therefore like mentally prepare for it, which I do think is really important in some of these situations with that like might present you with something that's literally happened to you in some of the worst parts of your life. Interesting. So um, I'm watching a little bit of gameplay here. For the record, the game is what, how would you describe it? A mashup of like a dating sim and Diablo kind of 
Like, where, where, where does this yeah, thing sit? Yeah, it's kind sit? of like a, it's like a roguelike dungeon crawler mixed with a dating sim. And I mean, it is it is really fun. And I don't usually like dungeon crawling roguelikes at all. It's yeah. not my jam. But uh, this whole content warning, you know, shebang happened and put Boyfriend Dungeon on my radar. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go try it. And then I really enjoyed it. The combat was fun. Mm. I was disappointed that there were only two dungeons because it is a, a small indie title, right? So... There's like two dungeons you can go in and then I think like six or seven like weapons you can romance, which is the romance part. The whole like hook of Boyfriend Dungeon is that you have these like super hot characters that also turn into different kinds of weapons and they all have their own like personalities and stuff and you can date them. Yeah. So you like date your weapon and the more dungeons you clear using that weapon, the better your relationship is. Like wow. <laughs> it sounds like. Hades to me and looks like Hades as someone who hasn't played Boyfriend Dungeon. It does a yeah, little. Yeah, so it is. Yeah. It's kind Except of, in Hades, yeah. you don't date the weapons. Right. Yeah, but see, you it, want so to date everyone out. else. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you come out of the dungeon and then there's all these like... um like static images and like um dialogue choices and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, which looks a lot like a, you know, your regular dating sim type uh, arrangement. Right, yeah. Um, which I guess is the point, but... uh that's interesting because you said something there that made me think, well, what what drew you to this game? And it sounds like it wasn't the genres or even the mashup of the genres. It's not dungeon crawling and it isn't roguelikes. It's that content warning and it got you in and then you liked it because it was good, but it still drew you in. So is that the point of content warnings? Like ultimately, well, is it a marketing It wasn't ploy? the content warning itself, right? right? It was the it was the like controversy surrounding the content warning. And it was more uh, like morbid curiosity as mm -hmm. I was like, come on, how bad could this be? Yeah. Uh, like, so it was more that I, I wanted to to see what they'd done and to see what the warning actually said and experience the whole thing for myself because I don't like being one of those people that makes an opinion off a headline. Right. <laughs> so same, same. I like to kind of get into it and really experience it. And especially in this specific case where I have real life experience, I'm like, you know, like how, how bad, how bad is it really? And it's, it is pretty bad. I'll be honest. Like mm. it is, um, it, it, it hit a lot of, uh, I hate using the word trigger, even though that's the right word but it's like yeah, it's just been used so much it's hard it to... has so many negative connotations right yeah. but it definitely d did um strike some nerves we'll say it that way mm -hmm. with me yeah. <laughs> for sure they were they were very good at making the situation feel realistic which is also something that maybe um when you're talking about some of the other things like swearing and violence and all the other things, sometimes they are so extreme and so big, they're obviously not realistic. Mm -hmm. And this was very realistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did it, ha gotcha. did it help to know that, um, not know, but does it give it more credence when this kind of content is being discussed when you know that this is a developer made up of women? Like this is a, a female led dev team, Kit Fox Games. And, does that make a difference? It does to me. I don't know if I'm supposed to feel that way though. Though should I? Should is that is that not enough? Like obviously the content needs to speak I, for itself. But yeah, yeah. You know. I don't that think it matters. Was, Sorry, yeah. go ahead, Garrett. I was going to say to that. I was going to ask. Like I, I haven't played it, but from knowing what I know about the game, like to me, I go, oh well. I, I mean, a, a, a toxic, manipulative stalker seems like a great idea for a horrible villain in a game about. Boyfriend Dating? weapons? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, like it, it definitely it was it was a good villain. Again, I think it just comes down to that one word of May in the content warning. I think otherwise it was totally fine because you can't disengage with him. He is part of the main story and you have to deal with him and what he's doing in order to make your way through the game. So um and and not even just make your way through like the story part of the game, but there are some parts of like the the second dungeon is locked behind completing story components. You don't you can't get to it if all you want to do is just date the weapons and ignore the stalker. Like you very much have to interact with him in order to keep going. Oh man, um, ghosting would have been a great idea. Uh, for an option <laughs> yeah. of how to deal with the stalker. The ghost ability. <laughs> you gotta you gotta build a, you gotta you gotta put points in your ghost perk. That, that would do it. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, yeah, interesting. But, uh, to speak to um, to speak to the women uh, dev team, though, yeah. I think that um, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily um, it doesn't 
I mean, on one hand, diverse diverse teams are very important, I think, in gaming. And I think that this team brought a lot of real world experience into the content, which is why it hit so hard. And I think that that's a good thing. Yeah. But I think, again, when you're talking about content warnings, there just are some things that are easier to make realistic and to hit those nerves because they don't involve things like animations or, you know, stuff like that, right? Like this is all in the writing. This is all in the delivery of the voice actors and stuff. And it's a lot easier to get those ideas and tone across when you don't have to worry about like, well, how realistic does this actually look? You know, like how much CG have we got? Yeah. Um, like you can make this really realistic without a big budget. So I think that that also really like that's the kind of difference of these two different kind of styles of content warning is like you have content from a visual standpoint and then content from an emotional standpoint. And I think those are two different things. Yeah. And just just mm. from a game from a genre perspective, this represents to me and I think this is a really good thing. This represents the a maturation of the subgenre known as roguelikes, which I am a fan of. Um, I really like them. And I've noticed in the last few years, we have gone from sort of simple mechanics, simple story, uh, rinse and repeat, fun game loop type arrangements and set it in sci-fi, set it in fantasy or whatever, and they're fun and whatever, and they're great. But there's a maturation happening with story, with character, with tone, with world building, um, with creative ideas like <laughs> dating your swords. Uh, you know, like that seems crazy on paper, but it's such an interesting and sounds like from everyone I've talked to a pretty elegant, uh, uh, you know, execution of, of a strange new idea and applying it to some, a couple of subgenres we already know about dating Sims and roguelike, you know, dungeon crawlers and ending up with something un entirely unique on the other side. I love when that happens, especially to small indie style games. And I start to see them make meaningful changes and differences. Um, another good example are all these deck builders. The you know Steam and other places are just awash with deck builders now, mainly based on the success of uh, Slay the Spire back in the day, a couple years ago, not really that long, long ago. But uh, they're starting to do the same thing. You're starting to see interesting new takes and stories and meshing and uh, of of other ideas and and genre subtypes back into this idea and. And I love that because it just means we're going to get cooler experiences. We're going to get better stories. They're going to be more authentic. Uh, so yeah, this feels this feels like a you know an attempt to to move in that direction, and I I like that a lot. I think that's really yeah. cool. So yeah. So the big concern, like the big debate over content warnings, is essentially a concern of spoilers, right? Kind of. I mean, like not that, entirely. Right? Is that oversimplifying? I think I think there's there's. I think that's some of it. That's part, yeah, that's part of the conversation yeah. for sure. Yeah, because if you, because all that stuff I read about uh, Bioshock, <laughs> you know, it kind of tells you everything that's in that game in a in an abstract but way. With no context, right? Right. No context. Yeah, yeah. It's funny too because I think the the there's a the line you read about you know uh, optional violence against children sounds so much worse than how it plays out in the game because yeah, it's technically violence against children, but the children are like the creepier version of the children from the shining yeah, yeah. like it's yeah. not yeah it like you reading that i was like wait i actually had to take a second i'm like wait violence against children bought a shock what the hell is that even talking about i'm like oh right the little sisters yeah, they're the creepy as hell the they're yeah, literally yeah. monsters basically yeah yeah and what's funny is the the line or the word optional makes it worse somehow like somehow saying optional violence against children what they're trying to say is well you don't have to hurt them but what it says to we me gave is, you the yeah, option. You can let them go, right? Yeah, you could. Yeah. You totally could. Yeah. And and that was yeah. something I did to my detriment because the game actually sort of punishes you if you don't get enough of the the stuff that they give you if you if you decide to end them. And uh, I remember at the time being really conflicted about that because I was like, well, for me to really progress in this game quick quickly, I need their juice or whatever it is they <laughs> gave you. And, uh, yeah, which again, this conversation sounds horrifying if you yeah. haven't if you haven't played bioshock and kind of kind of seen it in context but yeah um yeah like i yeah i i i this was barely on my radar like the whole conversation being had around around content warnings i, I haven't played boyfriend dungeon i was kind of vaguely aware of its existence mm. um 
uh, to which in our private conversation, Jocelyn was like, yeah, I wouldn't really expect this to be on your radar, Garrett. <laughs> to be on your radar, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, the art looks dope and the gameplay looks like Hades. So like now I kind of want to play it. Yeah. Hades I think you should. Great. I think it's a fun um, game. I think it's a good game. <laughs> yeah, that's why I keep yeah. hearing. I keep hearing like, don't don't let either the, the discussion around it dissuade you or any of that. Like there's actually a really awesome game under this that has nothing to do with any of the conversations other than it has this content warning It does deal with these issues. It's got this, you know, s small controversy, but there's also like a kick-ass game underneath all that, mm -hmm. which is a key here, right? Like yeah, we, nobody, we wouldn't be talking about this if it was some garbage game, like that said it had a big message to share, but we can't get through it. Like that's the other thing. Oh that makes yeah. Games yeah like every time someone's up in arms about some terrible game, it's, you know, someone made in their basement, that's like a browser game. It's like, it, it really only gets coverage for the shock of it. And yeah. it's like, well, no one cares because this game's terrible. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. but it, like in, in terms of like the conversation around like, oh, I did, you know, if like, being against content warnings for fear of spoilers, like to me, I'm like my, my, I so quickly go, it's a game. Give me the option to display the content warning. Like at the very beginning, go, would you like to view our content warning? Press mm. X. It's interactive. Like a DVD could do this. <laughs> this is a good point. This is a really good it's point. True. I hadn't thought about that. Like, like, uh, you know, like skipping intro lo logos and, you know, speed tree uh, credits yeah. and things. Like, like, I was so mad when, when Game of Thrones was still good and I gave a shit um, of the, <laughs> the, the catch up at the beginning. Like, previously on, except it was like previously on six seasons ago. And yeah. it's like, oh, I don't remember this character. Oh, shit. They're showing me it. Some, this character's coming back, I guess. Like, that always important. pissed me off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I would have loved, I would have loved the option to just skip that shit. Um, yeah. Like, easier. Sure. Uh, so, like, uh, yeah, I'm like, and here's a medium me where option. you can. It's literally a medium where you can. So at the very beginning of a game, imagine a world where you've got your main menu. You've got play game options, uh, credits, whatever. You know the things you always see. One of those could be content not warning. To, not even yeah, or or whatever <laughs> the word you want to use so it doesn't scare. A lot people. of games will even pause now. They'll keep you on the terms of service screen before they let you move forward. Why I accept, and then next screen. Would you like to view our warning? Right. Yes or no. And just hold it there until you make a decision. Right. Now, it may still be behave ultimately like a thing that will either draw people in or turn them away or a combination of both. But at least it's not, well, we got to get through this content warning. Like, I don't know who they're trying to, I don't know who they're trying to appease when they force it. In other words, like, who is is there, does the industry still fear like governmental overreach when it comes to game content to the point that they'll go way out of their way to make sure everybody knows that there's uh, optional child <laughs> death or whatever in in bioshock like I, I don't know sometimes it feels that way and then sometimes it doesn't because they're being goofy about it like that outlast yeah, one well, you know like I, their I, face. I, I don't personally see that being the kind of crux of the conversation now like like with boyfriend dungeon it seems to be coming from more of a place of like we as a society discuss mental health and mental trauma more now. Yeah. And, and to me in, in reading this from the outside, looking in as someone who doesn't play boyfriend dungeon and as someone who definitely has not had a stalker boyfriend in my <laughs> past. Um, like to me, it, it, that seems to be where it's coming from. Like, yeah, I'm sure there's someone somewhere who's like, Oh, it's a slippery slope. We're going to have more government crackdown. Tipper Gore is going to come back out and tell us to put more warnings <laughs> on things. I don't back, yeah. think that's the, to me, that's not the heart of this conversation. Right. But it's also no, I not, think this this yeah. is a game that's like that's made for a wider audience. Cause I think that that's also um something that maybe we should touch on is just the fact that the audience of video games in general has changed because the video games have just evolved so much over the years, right? So mm -hmm. they're starting to appeal to more and more people. And this really read to me as something that's like, hey. We've been through this. We wrote it realistically, and we want to let people know that, you know, if you've been through this as well, you may not like it. <laughs> like, you know, you should be aware because now as a society, Garrett, you're right. Mental health is very much on the forefront of so many conversations around so many issues now that I think that's where this is coming from as opposed to like, hey, let's avoid a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. And I'm all for this. Like the more we address this stuff, the better. There's lots of games that come to mind that that do a pretty pretty good job of this. But I always have to ask the question, like you brought up Tipper Gore, so now I have to say this. 
uh, back in the day, and like she's basically retired, or she's 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 the she's responsible in part for every rap record having a uh, explicit that big old box oh really okay i was like i don't know who this person is so this is why uh yeah parental advisory became a thing oh okay yeah so it was very much (laughs) a late 80s 90s kind of thing and she was you know she wasn't the only one but she was a big part of it this is al gore's wife former vice president al gore anyway she she really pushed that and made a big deal but these days do you even take a new rap album from somebody seriously or any album for that matter if you're looking for hard edge stuff do you, can you even take it seriously if it doesn't have that now iconic warning on it? Like, to me, it's a sales item now. Like, that's a promotional stamp and not oh, yeah. a warning. Well, well, again, yeah, back to the warning on, like, going back to our opening conversation with No Russian. Like, I think depending on what type of media you enjoy, yeah, it, it, it's a selling point as as much as it could be a deterrent. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, it's like, and that's why I, like, the more I thought about this, because I knew this was going to be a topic this week, I just kept coming back around to like, I, you know, as someone who, and, and this definitely comes from a place of like, I haven't experienced that type of trauma. So I don't think Boyfriend Dudge would affect me in the way that it affected right, you, yeah. Joss. But like, I would, I would personally, like, this is selfish and, and I think small potatoes in the grander scheme of like talking about being concerned about uh, triggering mental traumas. But like, I would like the option to opt out of being spoiled. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, that's why I kept coming back around to it's it's an interactive media. Like, why can't we just yes or no? I would like to view your warning and, and, and move on. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, too, like like some of the warnings that you rattled off, Scott, for games like Outlast and stuff, it is intentionally tongue in cheek because also it's like there there is for most of us a meta understanding of the type of game we're getting into before we even like loading the disc is already an outdated term before I download it from the PlayStation store. Um, like I, like I, I didn't pick up an outlast box and expect it to be a G rated experience. There's already, you know, a rating on the game and the cover is creepy as shit. Right. Like, so the fact that it has a warning that also is a little playful in that it's like all of these terrible things have happened and we will ruin your dreams. Right. Enjoy. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah it, it works in that in context, yeah, I sure. guess is what well, I'm trying to say. Well, sure. yeah. And the, and the context is really important there, I think. And, and you've brought up another interesting thing with the, just the game box or, or, you know, like the, the promotional stuff on steam now, <laughs> but yeah. uh, just the idea of the marketing around the game, because I think that's really important when it comes to your expectations of the content that's going to be in there like you said and i think it also makes a difference too if we're on like call of duty 25 versus like the very first one you know whenever you're talking about a new ip you don't know what those expectations are so it's up to the marketing to set them and i think that in the case of boyfriend dungeon it was very much a like hey here's a happy fun dating sim and by the way it's a weapon (laughs) haha you know like it was it was very um upbeat and happy and i think another one um that has really not been in the news i've been kind of surprised because it came out like a week after boyfriend dungeon is 12 minutes and for me the marketing around that game was very much like hey here's a murder mystery with a bunch of big name actors as voice actors and the and there was no content warning at all for that one and it's terrible it makes you do some truly awful horrible things but then to speak a little bit to your spoiler uh worry garrett um because it is a a time loop puzzle solver if they tell you what the content is in the game, then very quickly, it's also giving you the answers to some of the puzzles. They are horrible, awful, terrible, that no one should ever do answers to puzzles. But like, it's a, it would be a huge spoiler. So like, what do you even do in that situation? Right. I agree. Um, if this game, okay, let's say this game is called Girlfriend Dungeon. And this isn't, <laughs> and this isn't me just coming up with a hypothetical. This is actually real. If this was called Girlfriend Dungeon, and I found out there was a, character in the game that set a stuffed bear on fire on my porch at two o'clock in the morning rang the doorbell and ran and left a knife in it with a note that says i love you i'd probably not play the game that actually happened to me that was a long time oh ago God. long time ago uh i was in high school but um well, well thank you scott i needed a content warning for this episode because i am now <laughs> remembering the creepiest experience i ever had uh with an interested individual yeah it can happen to everybody, right? Like, and if that was what this game was, I would appreciate knowing that. But I could do it both ways. I could go, thanks for letting me know, but also thanks for letting it be an interactive medium where I pushed a button to find out. 
So, mm-hmm. so I, I, I you know. think Garrett's solution is a very elegant solution to the problem, honestly. Yeah. Well, Garrett's an elegant solution to the problem. <laughs> oh, thank you. The way thank I look you. at it. Uh, so anyway, if you guys have your own thoughts and feelings about this topic, we'd love to hear it. Send those uh, interesting comments and thoughts and questions to the instance at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Now this. Hello there. We got a quick email we'd like to read. Speaking I of emails. I always want to keep singing. I know. You want to keep <laughs> right? it going because it's Sorry. your favorite band and you just can't stop. It's not your I favorite just band. I need Angel from my nightmare. I need it. I need it. <laughs> uh, this came to us at the instance of gmail.com from Format Entity is his name. And uh, oh, chat's saying they're having trouble with the stream. Let me try restarting it real quick here. Hold on a second. Everything's fine on this end, but I think st- I think Twitch is being farty. Hold Don't on. waste your time on stream. It's yeah, already dead. dead. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Uh, ch- chat saying it, Twitch in general is going wonky. Oh, is it? It's not just. Yeah. That's not good for them now that they're having all these exoduses to YouTube either. Right. Uh, okay, so if I start stream on a different ingest source, let's try, let's, let's send it to Denver. See what happens in Denver. <laughs> okay. They're up in the mountains. They shouldn't be flooded. It'll yeah, be fine, right? It shouldn't be bad. Well, it's connecting. We'll, we'll let it try, um, but it doesn't matter. We can still finish this up either way. All right, here we go. All right, uh, this email. Let's read this email that I got here. Who's it from? I already said. It's from Format Entity. And he says, hi, The Instance. Heard the developers of Crossplay in development for the... Oh, I forgot to put the name of the game in here. Uh, what's the one with the um, uh, 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 four-player uh, four co-op, uh, free-to-play, you look like a bunch of weird space aliens? Uh, Among Us? No. Uh, it's a, like a third-person action-oriented thing, like Destiny kind of, except third-person and this weird oh, swords. Oh, 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 uh, uh, shit. Shit. <laughs> It's shit. No, it's not shit. It's a good game. So I uh, downloaded shit on Xbox. Warframe. Warframe. Oh, God. Warframe. 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 <laughs> All right. This is about Warframe. He says, hi, the instance. Heard the developers of Warframe have crossplay in development, so I downloaded a, uh, so I downloaded it on Xbox. Uh, have some work friends who have been playing it on PC for three years. My Xbox friends and I have been playing this thing exclusively now, and it was a grind. Mine, fish, some open world maps, etc. Trying to level up. I'm sorry, does it have, do you say fish? Can you fish in, you can fish in Warframe? How can you fish in Warframe? <laughs> There's a website for that, isn't there? Or no, that's Can You Pet the Dog? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. I love that, by the way. I'm, I, I'm frantically Googling Warframe fishing because. <laughs> I'm also a massive. Oh my God, there's a wiki. Oh yeah, you can fish. In Warframe? How weird. I mean, you're basically like a robot with an ass is all I know about Warframe. So this is really weird. <laughs> This is hilarious. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't know. Every picture I see of player characters in Warframe, they're just like the, the wedgie of the century <laughs> happening there. No, you're not wrong. Now that you're saying it, it's like, wait a minute. These guys, they look like uh, like Geiger, like um, Geiger drawings, <laughs> like really weird alien. Yeah, uh, PG-13 Geiger drawings. Yeah, yeah kind of. Way to put it. And Geiger they, drawings minus the wieners. And then they have butts. I was going to say, is that the this people drawings? <laughs> Oh, yeah, kind of. Well, that's the that, no, that's the that's Da Vinci. Oh, that is Da Vinci. Okay. I don't no, know. Geiger was the guy who designed the Alien and Alien, and yeah. his art oh. was all these creepy, like what? bio mesh naked women with a lot of phallic. It's symbology. all very weird. Yeah, if I sent when you I say an symbology, image, I mean it was definitely a bunch of penises. Yeah, like, it was really <laughs> obvious. Here, Joss, I'll regale you with one of these. This isn't a gnarly one, but it's a. It's just you'll see this and go, oh, I've seen his work. Okay, here you go. It's in our Discord. Um, anyway, Geiger was a nutbag is the point. No, that isn't the point. The point is uh, this email. All right. Let's move oh, on. okay, okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? You see it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he des- Not what I was thinking. <laughs> he designed the original Xenomorph and all that, and he was a, he was a weird dude. Anyway, uh, uh, here's what he says. Uh, blah, 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 trying to level up and play with PC friends once completed. Uh, working or sorry worth checking out and revisiting for show content sounds like it's fitting the instance these days free to play also says format entity uh i really respect warframe for what it is uh and how much success they're having and that it's still this really popular thing and if in, in some ways it out destiny's destiny and it's very cool but man do is it does it feel impenetrable to me at this point and i don't know why i feel that way i'm sure i could pick it right up again but uh, it's it, part of it is the style of the thing. It just feels like I'm entering a place that doesn't have any familiarity to me. 
And so I, just, I, I don't know where to strongly, start. strongly do not gel with how it looks. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I don't think it's, it's actually made like down the street from me in oh, London. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Yeah, like I, I live where this is. Wait, <laughs> London, Canada? Do you... Yeah, like, Canada. I didn't know there was a London, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go down there and chew them out for us and just say, hey, your style is sure. off-putting and, uh, you know. <laughs> Change all of your art for my friend Garrett. Okay, thanks, bye. Yeah, yeah thanks. I'm, 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 Like, it's not, I like, I, it, to delicately put, like, I don't think it's inherently bad. I don't like it. It is not my jam. Yeah. I, I get it. It's not mine either. I wanted it to be because I like new, different, and like I don't want same old. I, you know, I've kind of seen the same Space Marines a million times before. This t is a very different, a very alien take on that, which I'm sure is their whole point. But it yeah. doesn't give you I a lot more of hard reference edges. points. It just makes you feel like you're in a place you don't belong sometimes. And I, I, I don't know why I feel that way. <laughs> You know, like I'm not wanted there. I don't know. I can't explain. It. <laughs> it's not that the community's bad. They're very welcoming and nice and will help you and everything else. But I, just, I feel like I'm I feel like I discovered somebody else's obsession and mm. I, I just don't fit mm. in. So that's fair. it's really hard to jump into stuff that's been out for a long time. Right. Like that has an established community. And especially now that games are games as a service. Right. It's like they've had to put out content for their community over and over and over and over over however many years it's been out. And if you're a new player walking into that experience, you're just like, what is yeah, happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's a it's a it's yeah, a I thing. don't belong here. Slowly back out the door. Yeah. <laughs> but just I, Homer, yeah. Homer your ass into the bushes and call it a yeah. day. <laughs> I say, exactly. I say ha hats off to them for all their success. I think it's great. And um, I also like that they're doing crossplay. That's the other thing I think all games should be doing. So I have no problem with yeah. doing that. But someone in the chat's holding me to account here said, um, was it Badger Lord? Uh, he quoted me saying, quote, I've seen Space Marines a million times before. I don't need more of it. And then I buy every Warhammer 40K game I get my hands on. He's right. I can't lie. He's right. Because they're good. They make they good games good. over there at the 40K. They do. That new one. They're um, the opposite of Star Wars. They've licensed their, their well, they've licensed their license out to people with talent. For the most part. You get a few duds here and there, but at least they do it. You know, they get them out there. And uh, that one battle sector just came out. Very cool. Very cool. Turn-based kind of XCOM-y kind of things. Very good. Yeah, people should play. I was also, I, I was, I was being a little joking there. The, a little the, facetious, yeah. Because you know, Fall, the, Fallen Order was great. Fallen yeah. Order was a damn good. Game. There's, there's like one out of every, one out of every three Warhammer games are amazing. That's a, that's not great, <laughs> but that's good enough for me because I love everything about Warhammer. It's so good. Um, all right, that's it for your emails. Send those emails to theinstance at gmail dot com. No matter what you've got to say, think or or uh, wonder, uh, we're all here for you, man. So. Send us those emails. We'll read them right here on the show. All right. I think it's going to do it for us. Before we get out of here, a uh, quick hot take from the Angry Chicken crew. How's that new Mercenaries game mode stuff looking for Hearthstone? Oh, boy. I can't wait for that. <laughs> for the audio audience, Jocelyn just gave a thumbs down while she made the <laughs> farting noise. And uh, I concur. Oh, man. I've never, I've never seen... So, you know, I'm not, I don't play a ton of Hearthstone, but the Hearthstone community, I follow a whole lot of people in there and everybody seems down on this. I, I can't find anyone super it, stoked. Uh, listen, I guess if you like Raid Shadow Legends with a side of Pokemon combat, this will be for you. Yeah. Um, I, I hate, I hate those types of games. I, I think they're among the lowest of, uh, there's so know. many of them, uh, though. There's like, so much. In terms of, like, games and, and how you played, like, I find, yeah, I find the Rage Shadow Legends kind of slew of gotcha games to be among the lowest artistical integrity yeah. <laughs> type of game you can make. Yeah. Um, and this one seems uh, just bad. So, for yeah, for me, it's, it's it, they couldn't have made something I could be less possibly interested in. Yeah, that's 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 not a high recommendation. Uh, Jocelyn, your reasons? What's what? What do you uh, not? Why? Why? <laughs> well, I think the reason why you're seeing a lot of um, negativity out of the Hearthstone community is because I really and truly do not believe that this mode is made for Hearthstone players. I think that they are trying to potentially expand into the mobile audience and the mobile space, and they just kind of went, "Okay, what makes the most money in that space? Let's just do that." 
And it's kind of a departure from the normal development that we've seen in Hearthstone. And again, doesn't appeal to the core Hearthstone audience who, which to be fair, I mean, Battlegrounds didn't really appeal to the core Hearthstone audience. And that was great. But that came from a very like grassroots organic, like one guy made a tavern brawl that was super fun and it evolved into a mode they added to Hearthstone because they really came at it from a fun first perspective. Yeah. And this feels like we want to get our game into the hands of more people. How do we do that after, you know, existing for seven years? And I think that they've chosen the mobile gaming route, which is which is fine and valid from a corporate perspective, but it's never going to appeal to the audiences currently playing the game. And I don't think it's meant to. So, I mean, it's not for us. And uh, that I think that's OK, because there's going to be an audience and there's going to be people who are going to potentially enjoy this, because obviously somebody enjoys playing those style of games. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't necessarily I think maybe it should have been its own spinoff project, maybe made by King, not made by Blizzard. But, you know, God, does it seem like a King game? Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. But yeah, I mean, the arts, the arts great. Like, you know, the many systems like I looked at, I'm like, well, I really want to click around on this. But then they showed the gameplay and I was like, boy, this just looks like everything I can't stand about mobile game development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've definitely gotten on to uh, this will be a controversial track for them. I wonder, I mean, if it gets completely just rejected outright by the player base. I mean, maybe it doesn't last very long, you know, maybe there's it's always China. There is always yeah. China. Yeah, you got to remember China. They love this gotcha stuff. Like, and that's it. not a joke. Like this really does seem like it's something kind of more for the Chinese market, even though they spent an hour promoting it to English speaking markets. We um, should have uh, we should have a um, an entire topic about that. The new Chinese government rule about three hours a week for kids to play video games. And that's it. That's pretty crazy. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've, 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 it's a joke, of course. Uh, I, I podcasted for 11 years. I could spin yarn out of the smallest of prompts. But I feel like my take on that is, boy, I'm glad I'm not a kid living in China. No kidding, <laughs> Because man. I think it's my take. That would suck. Oh, my gosh, it would suck. I would be so pissed if I was a kid. And you know what? They'll find a way around it. <laughs> All right. That's what kids do. That's what kids do. All right. Uh, yes. Your thoughts on those things and everything else, let us know, you guys. We'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, of course, Angry Chicken happening all the time. Any uh, Anything, Garrett, you want to mention this week that's going on with you? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the most recent Angry Chicken episode, um, and also we put out two this week because there was a big Battlegrounds update. So we had an episode with Slissa, pro Battlegrounds player. Um, and then uh, we had a follow-up episode, episode the next day breaking down the Mercenaries news. So if you're kind of interested in our take on why we think it is like such a miss for... Hearthstone as it has been, um, we spent over an hour explaining why mm. on on the most recent episode of the Angry Chicken. So yeah, go check that out. All of it's at amove.tv. Um, and yeah, go Jocelyn, check it out. Jocelyn, what are you up to this week? Anything cool going on you want to mention? Uh, well, I very briefly mentioned 12 minutes earlier on in the show, um, and my review of it is not positive, but if you do want me to go more in-depth on 12 minutes, I did on the latest episode of the Gamers In, so check out gamersinpodcast.com. Uh, for that uh, but other than that just follow me over on twitter and twitch joss plays nice i really wanted to i want to hear more about that game so i will be definitely checking in because it, it on there's paper, a lot of swears yeah <laughs> Content oh, warning. Bet. there's a lot of swears <laughs> I, I that's the kind of game where on paper i'm like yep i'm getting it i'm playing that it's on game pass so duh of course i'm gonna play it let's play it and then i've heard so many really bad you know like angry takes about it like people really not happy with where that game went or did or how yep. it ended or whatever so i'm really bummed i'm bummed i like the sound of it and now i don't it looked very cool to me and i haven't heard anyone say it's a good game so yeah. i'm like oh i guess i'm not playing this i'm not going to be playing that game i have limited time i'm not spending it yeah. with this. you know don't what is good spend it on that <laughs> i'll tell you what i've got going on this week a little bit uh and what's still good in fact even better than ever is uh no man's sky i'm gonna probably be streaming a bunch of that no Man's Sky just added this uh, this whole like discover settlements on an alien planets thing where you can then manage them like a city builder, which is crazy oh, and cool. weird. Yeah, I know you like city builders. You might actually like how they implemented this. It's pretty neat. But um, uh, it, they got me back in playing it again, and I forgot how much I love that game. I'll I'm gonna be playing a crap ton ton of it. And um, they also fixed the build system. So if if the constant mouse wheel nightmare of building bases was driving you crazy. They finally fixed all that, and it's like usable now. So, uh, lots of reasons to check that game out again, and especially if you have a card that supports like DLSS or, uh, you know, some ray tracing and stuff. Oh man, that game looks good right now. I just got a new TV, so I'm trying to figure out what 
gorgeous things I should play on the you PS5. You should play gorgeous things on it, yeah. You should put gorgeous mm. things on your new TV. And and the PS5 slash Xbox Series S and X version of No Man's Sky is beautiful. Mm. Like 60 plus frames, uh, ray tracing stuff. All it, It's ama- It's amazing. Hey, look, I'm telling you. Let's if make this outro go 30 minutes longer. Josh, should I finally play uh, Horizon Zero Dawn? <laughs> oh my God, yes. They just announced it. <laughs> They just announced the collector's edition and I couldn't get it. And I was so sad because it sold out in like two minutes. I was just, oh my God, I was like crying in my computer yesterday. But so good. Forbidden West comes out in February. Yeah, Ooh. that game is so good. I have that on the, I have the PC version of the first one. I, of course, played it on PS4. It's an amazing game. It's amazing. Yeah. Clearly somebody listening they got an extra update. one they and just they want to the let it go update. for MSRP. Oh, they did? So that means you get a decent frame rate on the PlayStation 5, which is good. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, so you should go try it on PlayStation 5 because they've done that update. But yes, yeah, play, don't play Horizon Zero Dawn, please. Yep. And can I watch while you do it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In wow. a not creepy way. <laughs> like a, yeah, that's a, not creepy at all, Josh. No, that's not, that's not creepy. Not one bit. Yeah, I'll leave a, I'll leave a chair <laughs> outside the window. Yeah. You can just sit there like a total creeper. <laughs> I meant like stream it on Twitch. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's all we meant. That's all we the meant. The way you said it, though, it was so much more entertaining to think of you just like creeping outside like, oh, my God, this is my favorite part. Oh, I love this part of the game. And you bang on the window when it happens. <laughs> Every time I die, I just hear, you suck. There you go. <laughs> Well, if you're looking for more content to put in your brain holes, uh, including the other two thirds of the video game pie that is frogpantsplays.com, uh, the instance, of course, uh, core and boop. Uh, if you want indies, you get the boop show. If you're looking for all over games coverage and news coverage, check out core. And for the bigger ideas, the bigger concepts, and the bigger discussions, they're happening right here on the instance. Go check that out, frogpantsplays.com. And uh, support us at the instance.net. If you can, that'd be nice. We have a little support system over there. Become an Instance Plus member and get rad stuff. More shows like this at frogpants.com. That's going to do it for us. For me, for Garrett, for Jocelyn. We'll see you next time. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Yeah, yeah. Look what we did there. We did a show fun. right there. Yeah, it was a good. I chat. like doing this show. This is really this is fun. It's fun, right? It's mm-hmm. real good. Get yeah. the get the chew on things. I like that. Yeah, yeah. So I like, we go, don't go, go, spend go, go, go. a lot of time of like talking about big concepts and a lot of everything's like news, 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 games, reviews, boom, 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 boom. And this is very much like, but what about the big picture? Yeah. And I love, I'm so much more of a, I mean, I love games at the, at the, at the basement level. Right. But I love the big issues. I like the big discussions. I like the, the crazy overarching industry shifting, you know, things that happen. That to me is where some real meat is that is untapped. I just don't hear a lot of shows doing that. So hopefully we're providing Mm. some of that now with our, with our little change up. Um, I like it. It's yeah. fun. It was really fun. Yeah, it was great. Well, as usual, uh, enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed lunch here with me, Jocelyn, because that's what you have to do. You have to spend lunch hanging out with us. What a bummer. Um, <laughs> but I'm really How glad dare you? Do. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you take my lunch? I'll talk to you both soon. Thank you all for watching. I am going to be streaming to No Man's Sky today, so uh, stick around for that. Uh, unsure. Well, I don't know how many of you can even hear me anymore because it looks like the stream's stable again, but Twitch has been having issues today, man. I don't know what's going on. Uh, oh, yeah, that is true. Core is tonight. We bumped a day to give John some space. He has uh, had a family thing. We just want to make sure we could try to get him on. Even if he can't, though, we'll do it tonight uh, with just Bo and I, but uh, he should be there. So tonight, 5, um, yeah, 5 p.m. Mountain, and uh, what else? What else? What else? Film sack is uh, we did a watch along because Brian's out of town, but we did put one up, so that'll be up tomorrow. New there will be dungeons on uh, st- Saturday, and some other shit. So st- so stick around, man, and be there when you can for your friend named Fran, who likes a guy named Stan. I wonder if he can ever understand what the plan is for the man. <laughs>